2018 has come and this is the year you're going to write your exam for JE and your boards if you're a 12th standard student or uh, if you're a dropper or something then you won't be writing your boards but uh, today's session is about uh, the students who are going to appear for JE as well as for boards this year all right the 12th standard students now hopefully uh, by the end of December all your syllabus in your, in your uh, institute or in your uh, school has been uh, covered, right? And now the only thing which remains with you is revision, right? That should be the condition now, right? At least by the first week of January. Uh, one of the things which I have seen, uh, which uh, starts bothering students at this point is that uh, now that boards are coming, right? Only two months are there for the boards. Uh, what if I plunge myself completely uh, in preparation for the boards and uh, I uh, you know lose out on on my revision on JE what will happen then kya hoga agar mein pura pura boards mein focus karne lag gaya then uh, like the things which I had learned my, my revision pattern for JE uh, would it get affected or what should I do should I prepare for JE like should I continue my preparations for JE and simultaneously prepare for boards what should I do and of course you need to get good marks and boards as well so that is uh, a big concern right so today's session is about uh, uh, certain things that will help you as we call the title of this video to be to board the JE plane all right in the sense that uh, it will uh, cer certain tips right that will help you tackle the preparation for boards in a way that you're also revising uh, your concepts which uh, you you would want in JE that is like your your uh, application uh, prowess right so uh, let's let's start okay so one of the things which I really wanted to start with is uh, a, a tip I want to give you or, or a suggestion I want to give to you is that uh, please start reading NCRT okay NCRT books uh, are very well written they're very concise that is one very good factor because let's say you you uh, pick out any XYZ book from the from the market and you start reading it so see if, you, if you're concerned about the boards first thing there will be things which are extra and there will be too much reading okay and if there's too much reading after some time you, you lose out your motivation you cannot consistently read for so even many days all right but what NCRT does is NCRT uh, makes this really concise uh, chapters right in which uh, they put uh, most of the concepts like club together uh, and all that and uh, the good thing is uh, it is it is well within the, the the area of the boards that is the syllabus of the boards right and uh, what happens is uh, like when you're preparing for J for example the, the whole approach is, is application right you want to solve the question you are you should be able to uh, to handle the numerical that is given to you sometimes in that process what happens no matter in what coaching institute you are or what material you're following sometimes what happens in that in the toad to uh, to solve problems certain concepts which are important but not directly linked with application they, they get left out all right so there are many concepts like that which get left out and you're just unaware that these concepts even exist right and if such a concept is asked or such a one line one mark question or two marker is asked in board then it'll be like okay i don't know what to do now all right so uh, so reading ncrt is a very good habit if you haven't already developed that please do it now at least make sure that every day this is my half an hour right in this half an hour i'll read one chapter of an ncrt maybe if you are not able to complete one chapter be half a chapter and while you're reading it Take a pencil, mark out things. If you find something funny, just mark out this is funny, something interesting. You just don't just mess up your book, all right? Don't don't keep keep it pristine and like clean and all that, all right? Just just make it like your individuality should flow in your note in your textbook. That's what I wanted to say. Then uh, behind NCRT, like behind all the chapters on the back pages, you have solved. Uh, you have uh, back questions, right? Some solved examples are there some questions are directly given please go through all the solved examples of NCRT all right please go through all the solved examples of NCRT because uh, we have seen that uh, in uh, many exams uh, like in the previous exams of JE many questions from uh, NCRT examples have been directly taken especially in chemistry all right 
So they have directly taken a question which was there in NCRT and they have given it in JE means. So if you would have gone through those solved example, you would have not just solved that problem, you would have saved time. You understand you're getting double benefit in such a case. You save all time which you can apply to solve some other problem. So you are not just gaining this problem, you're also getting a benefit in solving some other problem, right? So please go through all the examples of uh, NCRT. And in the back questions you have like, uh, for example, what do you mean by enthalpy or what is uh, an isothermal process? Okay, these kind of questions are there, right? Please go through these kind of questions. Go back and find out where the answers for these questions are there in the chapter. And uh, make sure like when you are uh, marking these things, just imagine if you're not at, at least writing, I would prefer that if you write down all these answers, that would be the best. But if you don't have time, at least imagine that, okay, if I'm going to write this answer, I'll write, okay, an isothermal process is one in which the temperature remains constant. Is that enough? No, that's not enough. Then maybe you can like give uh, a, a little more detail. All right, fine. In an isothermal uh, process, uh, the temperature uh, does not change. Okay, that means the internal energy of, uh, will also not change. Okay, do you have some other information about an isothermal process? Okay, in an isothermal process, work done is this much. Okay, so if this is uh, this comes out to be a six marker, you ha you have like a bunch of four or five points which you can write. And if it comes out com comes as a four marker, then also you have like three or four points. And if it comes out as two marker, then you can just write two uh, two lines or give an example or maybe a diagram, and you can just get through with it. Okay. Now one more thing, while reading NCRT, one thing uh, I would really suggest you. Although see, all these are suggestions, so please uh, don't think that this, this is some hard rule which you have to follow to get good marks and boards. There's, no, there's nothing like that, I think, uh, in any field of life. But uh, these are some suggestions, certain things which I've tried and I've seen uh, my students try and it has helped them, maybe it can help you. So you can, while you're going through NCRT, you can make a list of all the formulae which are there in the chapter. For example, if I talk about magnetics, right, magnetism, I know that uh, when, when we are preparing for JE, there are a bunch of formulas, there are many formulas, right, there are like, and uh, sometimes uh, teachers suggest you that uh, they recommend you to remember certain formulas. So obviously, you know that in, in the JE module, there are a lot of formulas, but when you come to NCRT, there are only like three, four or five significant formula, okay. So what you do is, while you're reading uh, NCRT, you note down all those formulae, that only these formulae are there. Uh, which I need to know for, for, from the perspective of boards, okay? And like that, you do that for all the chapters. Why are you doing, doing that? Of course, while doing it, it might sound a little boring. But then you know that, for example, you have this physics paper coming up, right? And you have like some three days gap, let's say. In three days gap, you cannot like study everything in the same intensity you did before, right? There are some chapters in which you were weak, so you focused for, on the first day more on that. Uh, maybe on the second day you focus on some other chapters you, in which you felt you were weak. But on the third day, what you would do, you would go through all the chapters which you have already gone through, but now you have, that you have all the formula written and some anecdotes written next to the formula, apply this formula when this happens. I used to name my formula, right? Um, like this, this is like crazy formula or like this is the one in which uh, R goes on top of L. Some crazy name I'll give it for my own, see, you know, Every and one more thing, all right. See, uh, sometimes students do this that they uh, take this list of formulas from their friends. Why tumne banaya mujhko bhi de do. You have you have done it. Give it to me also. I'll also use it. That doesn't work, okay? Because you just cannot eat from someone else's plate on this. The the whole process of making a, a formula list, right, and writing some anecdote, something uh, interesting about that formula or something, this one is difficult and this one I forgot and this this one looks funny, whatever you want to write or do something. It attaches an, your emotion with that, with that sheet of paper, okay, with every line which you have written. And next time when you completely concentrate and look at that sheet of paper and you like go through each line and you, that those emotions come back, oh fine, I wrote this one, yeah, okay, fine, all right, I get it, yeah, yeah, that was, I had a confusion then, yeah, now I'm clear. So that kind of like emotion backtracking, emotional backtrack, backtracking happens in your, in, your, in your mind, all right. So please make your own for a list of formulae. Not just uh, uh, formulae, for example, in chemistry, important reactions, named reactions and exceptions, which are there in NCRT specifically. You can write that because of course for JE, we do a lot more uh, reactions 
and uh, a lot more uh, exceptions and all those things are there but only from an uh, NCRT and board perspective what all the reactions are there and whether it's named or whatever is there you find that important things are there because NCRT usually would take only the crux things in, in their books so write that down and maybe like you can make like a notebook in which you have like one one pages and try to be very concise okay don't like write pages and don't write like lines and lines on this because see the more you write the next time when you're revising it the more inertia you will have that you okay itna sara kon padega all right so if you have like concise lines and some points it's like okay fine yeah this is what i wrote i find four things i have to remember this these are the things for cool 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 all right then uh, uh, another thing is in, is that uh, like say physical chemistry or you take physics uh, there are a lot of definitions right as, as i was saying before so you can also have like a she sheet of uh, all the definitions which are there in chapter for example you pick up a chapter you write all the definitions which are there in the ch chapter uh, say you take the chapter of uh, force the, then the definition of momentum the de definition of uh, uh, change in momentum definition of impulse all those like these are like like 10 definitions are there say you need not write the definitions themselves but at least write down how many definitions you have so that the next time you're going through, you can say like, fine, okay, angular momentum, do I know what angular momentum is here? Fine, yeah, those five lines, four, four, yeah, five, five points up to write. Okay, fine. Uh, what is the next thing? Okay, linear momentum. Do I know about linear momentum? Yeah, yeah, these are the definition. These are things that are the diagram, which I remember. Oh, I don't remember the diagram. Flip through. Yeah, this is the diagram. Fine, I remember now. See, a big part of board boards is uh, is memory all day. Although uh, it is very unfortunate, but... Uh, uh, memory plays a very important part you know that right because you have to remember those, def those definitions it's just just by understanding them that will not be enough because you have to also express it okay just by writing one line that will not be enough okay so please do that and in physics you have a lot of derivations okay if even if you are not making a separate list for, for formula or definitions please 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 do it for derivations because there are a lot of derivations and uh, if you don't make a list of the number of derivations and all the derivations that you have in a, in a particular chapter, then you are going to miss out some other derivation. You know, write down this derivation. Okay, this is the derivation. Derivation of uh, uh, electric potential due to a point charge at, at, a, at a point at a distance r from it. Okay, this is the derivation. Just me, this, this this happened. Okay, this has five lines. This is the one where I make something. You write down about it. Don't have to write down the whole derivation. Next time when you go through, okay, yeah, this is the derivation. This is the derivation. So like that, you can do. And as I said in NCRT, uh, please mark important points. Some people do this, uh, that they, they, they have this uh, while studying uh, and while making these short notes, they make it in the form of flow chart and diagrams. Okay, I also have that habit because I find uh, if something is diagrammatically represented as something which is made by me, it is very easy for me to connect. For example, to, to talk about this, although all these ideas I already had, but I made like this diagrammatic uh, thing, all right? So what happens is that I know what I want to talk about, but if I just look at the clue, yeah, it strikes. Okay, this is what I have to talk about. Okay, and uh, this is something uh, that's going to come very handy. Now uh, I want to talk about uh, revisiting J. What I mean by revisiting J is, for example, you you are preparing for electrostatics, right? Electrostatics in boards. So you're going through NCRT, you're going through, um, uh, you, you're making a formula sheet, you're making your derivation sheet, you're, you're doing all the derivations, right? Here, although you're doing it for boards, just please take into consideration the things you have learned in JE as well, okay? If you have given two days to prepare for electrostatics, give it an extra day and go through the things that you, you should learn uh, while preparing for mains and advanced. All right, and how would you do that? Of course, I'm assuming by, by December you'd have good notes from, for advanced and means because without that it will be very difficult. Okay, so you go through your notes once more while preparing. Okay, don't be like okay, boards is separate preparation, J is separate preparation. That is not a very um, a, a very optimal uh, you know thing to have. That's that's not that's not very good. So while you're preparing for electrostatics give it a little extension go through je because now you've learned new some new concept you might have learned some new way of looking at things you might have learned and you would see okay i have i had understood this concept in this way last time now i've understood the same concept in a newer way as well now that concept has become completely concrete in your mind all right so that is uh, important so this is like revisiting all the uh, concepts and obviously in your notebooks uh, notebook you'll have some solved examples 
in your in your sheets you'll have solved examples in your app you'd have solved examples so go through the solved examples okay although you don't have to like sit and solve them again you don't have to go through the exercise again because your main focus is boards but you can go through the solved examples and you you'd see that uh, it would kind of uh, uh, make whatever thing you you knew about the chapter even more like uh, what what do you call it like more rooted because now you you're coming from a more theoretical uh, place all right uh, now one uh, important thing which uh, i found is uh, a thing which really helps in preparation is study groups okay especially for boards uh, what's a study group a study group is like uh, me uh, studying with one of my friend with i really with whom i really gel gel well with and uh, maybe like another friend two or three of us not more than that three four five is is, is is pain in the neck okay just two or three friends are enough and with these two or three friends what you do is uh, you just uh, uh, for example okay fine i have done the chapter of electrostatics you have also done chapter of electrostatics okay to ye derivation karke dikha okay then he he does that the der derivation and you see that you forgotten this particular step okay and he, he he like gets to know okay this is the step which i need to know and you also get to know that see he had forgotten this step i don't have to forget this step when i do this okay so so it helps you also to learn more if you are teaching so this is called the feynman technique Richard Feynman, one of the uh, world's most famous theoretical physicists, had this technique of learning called as the Feynman technique, in which he uh, taught or people or like which, in which he basically realizes that the best way to learn something is, is is by teaching it. Okay, so let's say your friend has not learned magnetics, you just teach him the derivation of magnetics. Ki ye step aega, fir ye step aega, fir ye step aega. Then you have to do this step, then this step, then this step. And this is like how how does this step come after this step? Then you're like, okay, this is this is the way, or you're like. Okay, wait. I also don't know. Okay, wait. Okay, then you realize. Okay, you also don't know. You thought that you know, but you don't know. So, study groups are really good, and it also helps for your one markers and two markers. Okay, one marks are, markers and two markers are mostly factual kind of questions. So you can have like this factual discussion. Okay, you tell me ki uh, what will happen to phenolphthalein when I when I add it in this chemical, or what happens to potassium permanganate when you add this thing. Some some kind of. Uh, uh, very factual kind of discussion you can have like general knowledge things we used to have i remember when i was uh, when i was young when i was in seventh or eighth standard or you also we used to have this ch chapter this uh, subject called general knowledge in which you have to learn like the present name of the president so i used to like sit with one of my friends i'll remember everything and then uh, he would ask me questions and i ask him question things like this we used to do okay now another uh, important uh, thing uh, for preparation of board I have spoken about reading NCERT, I have spoken about revisiting JE every time you are preparing a chapter, I have spoken about study groups. The fourth thing I want to talk about here is old question papers. Please find and get old question papers, they are available online and start solving them. Okay. And uh, the best thing you can do is like once you, you, you have prepared and you feel that you are prepared, okay, or maybe like you are 70-80% confident, you, you take an old question paper, set your timer and start solving it. Because trust me, one of the things which people really underestimate in an examination is their writing speed. I know I have lost marks in physics in 12th board because my writing speed was slow. Okay, so I have gone through that pain. So I know what how it feels like when you really know how to uh, what the answer to the, a six marker is, but you don't have the time to write it. Okay, so you have to really practice your timing. Okay, you, so one paper you do, you realize that in three hours I'm able to do only like some what seventy percent of the paper. Then you feel like, what am I doing wrong? Okay, so you realize all those things. First thing is that the time thing, time consciousness comes into your mind. That is an important thing. Okay, the next time you write the paper, you will be less panicky, and the next time you you will panic less. So your panic level comes down as you as you solve more and more papers, and. Uh, uh, on top of that, it is giving you the, the writing skills also. For example, you wrote that paper and you show it to your, your teacher and you're like, she's like, uh, oh, fine, like you're supposed to make a diagram here, you're, you're supposed to make like arrows on the rays which you've drawn, this diagram is not right, this marking is not right. So many things which you, f you felt that you knew but you didn't know, right? You get to know those things uh, because you have done a written practice. Uh, and also like there are pre-board examinations, please uh, appear for pre-board examinations uh, in your school or if uh, any else where it is conducted. Please appear for pre-board examination for the same reason that you, 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 you in the real examination simulation you are and you would know that uh, how it feels like to sit and, uh, and write for, for like three, 
three long hours okay uh, now uh, uh, another thing which I want to talk about here is uh, is uh, how to how to answer your questions okay now first thing is uh, now again this is a suggestion all right please don't take it uh, to, please don't take it to mean that uh, this is the only way or something I would always suggest someone to see you have this one markers two markers four markers and six markers I would always suggest you to go for the six markers first because what happens if you're going for the one markers right then what happens uh, let's say you don't know that problem that you don't know that uh, thing okay uh, what is what chemical uh, or, or Wilkinson's reaction happens between what kind of uh, thing okay uh, some question is there like that now you feel like okay I knew this and then you feel like okay I'm not sure whether I know this I don't know this you have spent like four or five minutes or four minutes like thinking about whether I know this or don't know should I write this should I not write this should I do this should I not do this so this kind of thoughts come into your mind and you're basically wasting time okay for one mark you wasted four minutes if though if you had spent those four minutes in a six marker you would have written half a page because you would be in a flow because you have attempted that question because you think that you already know it all right so please attempt the one markers and two markers in the end if you're leaving the six six mark questions then that is a very big problem right so always like uh, solve the that's my suggestion always solve the six mark marker questions first okay so that you just so, so like there are three questions with uh, in which you have to attempt two you, you select which two you have to attempt and you start solving those those problems and even if you take a good 12 or 15 or maybe 20 minutes that's fine because in the end even if you have like a five minute or like a six minute left to solve your one markers then in a minute whether I know this or not know I don't know this that's just quick quick thing okay if you know this you write it down if you don't know it, you don't write it down anyway there's no negative marking all right if you don't have time then whatever comes to your mind you write it down all right so that is very important that helps in time management uh, one thing second thing uh, uh, in boards one of the thing which which matters the most is is the steps all right so uh, for example uh, you have to for example there, there is an integration which you have to do integration of x square uh, sine square x dx okay now you write sine square x in terms of uh, 1 minus 2 cos x by 2 dx and then then you can maybe like you can just take that 1 by 2 common out and then you can directly write the answer that's what you have been doing when you were, were if you were solving a problem of j uh, behind that sheet like in, in rough because most of the problems you solve roughly right so this roughly solving problem basically creates a problem that you have this habit this deliberately put thing inside you by the by your teachers which is which is required to to eat your steps because you don't have time in je to write all your steps but in boards you need to so you just understand that even if you are so feeling like that after this directly i can write this one people will understand just assume that they would not okay assume that you're writing this paper to someone who's really really if i may say dumb okay although they are not i'm not i'm not i'm not saying anything bad about anyone i'm just saying it's a frame of mind you just feel that i'm writing this paper for someone who is maybe like reading this definition for the very first time okay or just going through this derivation for the very first time every step has to be clear well written and whatever things uh, for example uh, somewhere you have sine square x plus uh, cos square x is equal to is uh, in your expression you just wrote it one that's what you do in your j you don't even just it's automatic it's in your system one but in your boards and the side you have to mention that yeah you know because because we have an identity that sine square theta plus cos square theta is equal to one all right so these small small steps uh, are very important because uh, like obviously like I mean like uh, if I had to give five marks if I if the derivation contains five marks and there's a student who has written all the steps very clearly and there's a student who has written only four steps or five steps obviously I'll give three marks to the student who has written only four or five three or four marks I'll cut one marks and give one extra mark for this student because he's, he's paid so much attention he's been uh, so meticulous in writing his derivation right and that that matters in board so please uh, write all the steps second thing diagrams are very important okay so even if it's a two marker or a four marker or whatever you have diagrams are very important sometimes you feel that okay it's just a two mark question 
fine if I draw a diagram it's fine but what if it takes too much time what should I do just leave some space and move if you know the diagram come back if you have time just draw the diagram later okay so you're not going to lose marks for doing something extra please remember that so if you if you can draw a diagram please draw it or at least leave some space this is one thing which my mother told me uh, when, when I was preparing for 10th boards is that you write down an answer don't write the second answer just next in the next line leave some four five five four five lines six lines after that why because what if you some other point strikes you later or some diagram strikes you later or something you want to cut and like rewrite so those things happen okay because we are all humans and we sometimes forget and sometimes we feel like like you know polishing our stuff so uh, please leave some lines or this is very picky kind of a suggestion i know that but fine all right uh, so another thing is uh, when you're writing be very clear even if your handwriting is not very good make between your words there should be enough spaces don't like make like a khichdi of all your words okay because see some students are like hey, how does it matter i know the concept how does it matter how i write it it does matter all right if you want to really score good marks and boards it does matter because trust me i have taught for uh, for boards and i used to correct papers and i know that when you have like some 300 papers to correct and you in your correcting papers that i'm talking about the psychology of the person who is who's checking your paper all right you have 300 papers to correct and a paper comes right in front of you and you're like okay i don't know what he's writing oh, fine fine okay the more effort i have to put to read that paper the more the it is more unlikely that i'll give, give good marks okay it, it becomes more likely that i'll cut marks for the student because he's just making me uh, put some see this is ethically wrong I, I agree okay this should not be done but i am saying that people who are writing the exams are human people who are check checking the exams are human we are all human so see this error happens so understand that that this psychological thing happens with the people who are correcting the papers and i've seen this many times in my life that this happens and uh, not just with me and i would not say that i would do it i'm not i'm not saying that but i'm saying that I've seen this with my colleagues also sometimes that they get frustrated by checking to so many people and if your handwriting is bad they tend to feel it's a, it's a negative kind of vibration okay so it's, it's not good so uh, be clear another thing uh, with respect to physics is that uh, if if for, for example if they ask you to define energy you define energy draw a diagram always mention units units is a very small thing which can give you a, a half mark sometimes half mark are contained for only for units so all the time mention units don't forget units in chemistry don't forget reactions don't don't just write those words write down the reaction write down the catalyst write down what what are the states of the reaction reaction everything you know you write down okay you're not going to lose marks if you're sure even 80 90 percent sure that uh, what you what you're going to write uh, is right uh, please do that okay so these are just uh, certain uh, things which i have uh, discussed with you that uh, in boards uh, uh, one of the greatest tool uh, is uh, uh, reading ncrt then uh, revisiting j every time you're preparing for a chapter then uh, study groups find a good friend and you know uh, use your own resources also use the resources of your friend uh, then uh, old question papers बहुत सारे सवाल फंसते हैं मैं बता रहा हूँ टू ओल्ड ओल्ड क्वेश्चन पेपर्स ओके एंड देन हाउ टू आंसर ओके बी क्लियर ऑफ द स्टेप्स डायग्राम्स रिएक्शंस यूनिट्स एंड इफ पॉसिबल राइट टू योर आंसर्स पॉइंट वाइज सो दैट द पर्सन हु इज चेकिंग इट हैज लाइक लाइक डायरेक्टली इन क्लियरली सी थिंग्स ही कैन डजेंट हैव टू गो थ्रू द इन बिटवीन कनेक्टिंग लाइन्स ओके सो दोज आर सर्टन पॉइंट आई वॉन्ट टू गिव यू एंड प्लीज डोंट पैनिक ओके स्ट्रेस इज इज वेरी वेरी बैड and so i'm going to take some questions now steffi neel is asking is it possible to revise the 11th before february okay that is a very ambiguous question what does it mean is it possible to revise 11th before february so i'm assuming that you're a 12th standard student and uh, what do you mean possible to revise are you want to do you want to revise 11th uh, the je thing or uh, the whole boards i'm sorry the question is not very clear uh i am not even sure how much time okay fine uh right mehta very good name uh she is revision strategy oriented for j mains 2018 uh i have already discussed that uh if you go back to see one of uh, in one of our live videos i've discussed uh, the revision the entire videos about revision strategies for j mains 2018 um in fact for any exam it can be used 
today we are discussing about boards so i am not going through the revision main thing i think uh, right if you go back to that video just uh, search in our uh, section you will find it wazir sayed says uh, need a study time table sir please 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 okay so uh, i want to tell you that uh, study time table there is problem okay the problem is everyone is different and a, a, a single thing doesn't work for everyone okay some people are morning people they woke up they wake up like at 4:30 in the morning and they're they're full of vigor and they want to study some people wake up at 7 o'clock 6:30 but in the night they're full of vigor and they want to study so and some people are like they want to take one hour nap in the afternoon some people don't feel like doing that some people can study like continuously for 2 hours some people like to study in half of hour break with like 5 5 minute break they take some snacks and that so how do you want me to like make a proper study table for you. that's that that's study time table is very difficult okay so what i can suggest to you is understand yourself okay understand that you have to maximize the thing which you're learning understand your pattern okay i i like to, i like to eat so i take this much time to eat find uh, so this much times and one more thing don't make a very hard time table which you're going to follow no matter what every night before going to sleep make invest 15 minutes and make time table for the next day which is more or less similar to the previous day or the day which is just you have just spent but it is little flexible okay maybe tomorrow your aunt is coming you have to go pick her up maybe uh, some extra thing has come so like adjust for those things so so that uh, if those things will be already included in your time table then you would be able to like follow it uh, you know uh, without uh, you know any excuses from your own end because you would have taken care of all the factors which are going to come in okay and uh, shaman rohan says is j best for offline or online which is easier uh, i have not written a j online exam but uh, i see that uh, students write those exams and i have taken some mock tests and all that i would say that online is better in the sense that uh, you have an option to change your answer okay in offline what happens is uh, once let's say you're really confident you found some answer and then you feel like okay uh, what if like it is correct and you mark that answer and and then like then you can't change it okay it becomes difficult okay so like you have to erase it and like if you're using pencil and all that plus like there are some problems that sometimes in that those bubbles that you fill uh, you fill it like little outside and all that so that's not a good idea so i would prefer to do it in, or do it online bharat krishna is asking if we master ncert can we get full marks in board Mm, what do we mean by mastering ncrt let me understand this mastering ncrt if you mean that if you have read through all the all, all of ncrt you have if you if you are really familiar with all the formulas in the ncrt and all the all the back problems in ncrt and uh, all those things i think that would give you a 70% uh, great uh, like uh, preparation but i think if you club that mastering ncrt if you club that with previous year question papers then then you're set then you're set all right so um, those are the questions which i'm taking um, so this was a session on uh, how to board je uh, plane and uh, this is our fb page i hope you like like this live session please like and uh, uh, you can also go to our youtube and we have a lot of interesting videos if you don't understand something you can watch those videos there are animations we have we have tried our best to make the things interesting so that, that at least that boredom factor is not there you have total engagement so please subscribe to our channel and uh, prepare for your boards uh, well drink a lot of water and be stress free and chill and like study and uh, happy new year